Hello and welcome back to Four Best Academy. Welcome back to our AMC 1012 preparation videos for the 2021 contest. The contests are this week and next week. So we are going to take this chance now to give you five tips to score the best mark possible on the AMC 10 and the AMC 12. Now, our first tip is about choosing your questions. There are 25 questions on the AMC 10 and the AMC 12 and only 75 minutes to answer those questions. That would give you three minutes to answer each question, which means it's very unlikely that you'll be able to get through all questions one to 25 correctly and in the time limit. So rather than plowing through questions one to 25, and eventually running out of time. Instead, we should look through the paper at the beginning and highlight questions that we think we'll do well at. You know your own mathematical strengths, so why not go through the paper and find the questions that suit those strengths? Find the questions that you think you have the best chance of answering correctly. At the same time, make a note of any questions that don't suit your mathematical strength. If you know you struggle with a certain type of question, then leave it. You can skip over it. And if you have time at the end, you can always go back to it. Following on from choosing our own question, our second tip is about focusing on the first half of the paper. There are 25 questions in the paper and all 25 questions are graded the same. Each question is worth six marks, whether it's question one, question 10, or question 25. In which case, there's no point racing through the first half of the paper to try and answer questions in the second half, and potentially making silly mistakes in that first half of the paper. The first half of the paper have the easy questions in them, so let's make sure that's where we put our focus. Get those questions correct and then move on to the questions in the second half of the paper. If you've highlighted questions that you think are your strengths, focus on the ones that appear in the first half of the paper first and then move on to those later on in the paper. You can always come back and do questions later if you have time. Our third question is about knowing when to skip. It's very easy to get started on a question that you think, I've got a great chance of answering this, and to get five minutes into it only to realize that you're going around in circles. You don't actually know how to solve it and you're stuck. At this point, we might think, well, I've spent five minutes on this question already. If I just leave it, that's five minutes time I've wasted. However, you may, you may waste even more time on it if you continue to work on the question and don't find a solution. Skip it. You can come back to the question later and it'll also give you a chance to move your mind onto other things so you can come back with a fresh mind. There's no point wasting time on a question that you know you're stuck on. Those five minutes you've spent on the question already have been gone. There's no point spending any more time if you know you're stuck. Know when to skip a question is incredibly important. It's very, very easy to get stuck on a question and to not want to leave it. Have the confidence to leave a question and come back to it later if you have time. In the same way of knowing when to skip a question, we also should know when we can guess a question. We said that every single question in this paper is worth six marks. You are not, it is, does not go against you to answer a question incorrectly. However, if you leave a question blank, you score 1.5 marks. Now, if you guess a question, there is a 1.5 chance that you get that question correct. Sorry, one point, a one in five chance that you get that question correct. So therefore, your expected mark, if you guessed a, guessed a question, would be 1.2. That is lower than the 1.5 marks you would get if you left it blank. 
So if you have a question where you have no idea of the answer, guessing would actually reduce the expected number of marks you would get on that question. If we can eliminate one of the answers, for instance, on this question here, we have what is the least possible value of x, y minus 1 squared plus x plus y squared? Well, if I let x and y equal 0, we get an answer of negative 1 squared, which is 1 plus 0. So we get an answer of 1. So here, we can eliminate 2 as an answer. That leaves me with only four possible answers to this question. Now, my probability of guessing this question correctly is 1 in 4. And that gives me an expected mark of 1.5 if I guessed, which is the same as if I leave it blank. Now, it is still a risk, but at this point, the risks weigh up even. You can have a guess if you can eliminate one answer or you can leave it blank. Either way, either way your expected mark for that question would be 1.5. However, if we can eliminate another answer in this question, we can reduce our probability even more. So for instance here, because we are squaring both these numbers, we know they both must be positive. We have x, y minus one and x plus y. The only way that we could get zero is if we had zero plus zero because both of these must be positive. If x plus y equals zero, there is no way that x, y minus one can equal zero because the only way x, y would equal zero is if one is positive and one is negative, which mean that our brackets here would have to be a negative number minus one, which would always give me a greater, greater than zero answer if we square that. So we know that zero cannot be an answer from that expression. Therefore, we can now cross out two of our potential answers, leaving us a one in three chance of guessing this question correctly. Now, our expected score is two, which is higher than the 1.5 we would get for leaving this question blank. So if we can eliminate two answers, then it is worth having that guess because our expected result would be higher than the 1.5 marks for leaving it blank. And finally, our last question is to have a realistic target going into this paper. As I said before, there are 75 minutes to answer 25 questions. It is asking a lot to be able to go through all 25 questions and answer them all, let alone answer them all correctly. Have a little bit of a realistic target in mind. To score in the top 2.5% of the AMC 10, you roughly need a score between 100 and 115 marks. That could be the same as scoring 15 questions correctly and leaving 10 questions blank. So you could only answer 15 questions. If you got them all correctly and left the other 10 blank, you would score between 100 and 115, and that would give you a very good chance of getting in the top 2.5%. In the same way for the AMC 12, to get in the top 5%, you only need to score between 85 and 95. Now we're looking at about 13 marks uh, to get uh, to get a score into that uh, into that region. So 12 or 13 answers correct and leaving the rest blank. Going in with an unrealistic target of answering all 25 questions correctly could cause you to rush and make small mistakes that would lose you easy marks. Make sure you have a realistic target in mind and don't be afraid of leaving questions. If you leave a question, you can still get 1.5 and you can still get a very good score. Remember that answering 15 questions out of the 25 could give you a score in the top 2.5% of the AMC 10. If you go in with a target of trying 20 questions and you end up having to leave five, that could be a very realistic target if you want to score in the top 2.5%. I hope these five tips will do you well in the upcoming contests. 
Hope you come back to Four Best Academy for some more videos later on, but good luck in your upcoming contests. And I hope to see you again very soon.